Jesus name. Amen. This morning we are going to focus on the voices of our Lord Jesus. As I see in the beginning, you see, there are a number of voices of our Lord and Savior in the Gospels, in the New Testament, in the Bible. And today our key verse, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says, Come to me, see, all who are weary and heavily burdened, heavily laden, and I will give you rest. You see, the Lord is calling, His voice is calling. He says, come to me, you see. The first thing here we see is the Savior's voice. You see, the voice of Jesus is the voice of a Savior. He is saying, come to me, an invitation from Jesus. He is the Savior who invites sinners. He welcomes sinners. Loaded with their burdens of sin, you see, burdened with the burdens of sin, he is inviting them, he is calling them, he says, Come to me and cast your burdens into me. You see, these are the burdens of sin and pride and hatred, and which brings a lot of stress and heaviness and agony in a person's life. And so, come to Jesus. He will forgive your sins, you see. He will cleanse you and give you true rest. The peace of conscience, the ease of mind, the tranquility of soul, you see. The righteousness in Christ and the eternal rest. And the eternal rest. He says, come to me, you see. And you come to him, anyone comes to him, he's cleansed, he's forgiven. And that person receives, you see, the true rest, the peace of conscience and ease of mind and tranquility of soul and righteousness found in Christ and eternal rest is it? the voice of the Savior. Secondly, the voice of Jesus is the voice of physician. The voice of the physician. We read in John chapter 5, verse 6. In John 5, 6, when Jesus saw that invalid man lying near the pool of Bethesda, see what Jesus said to him when Jesus saw him lying and know, knowing that he had spent much time, he said to him, Do you desire to be made whole? He is asking that man, do you want to be made whole? Meaning that I can heal you physically as well as spiritually. To be made whole means to be healed physically as well as healed spiritually. To be made whole. You see the man's heart was in such state of depression because he had been lying there for years together that he even does not reply to Jesus by saying yes Lord. He never says yes, you see. But Lord in his mercy makes him whole. And he was healed and he walked out of that place a totally made whole man, you see. And we read in Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Even for us, the Lord desires that we be made whole. This is the voice of Jesus, the voice of a physician in Colossians 2 10. And you are complete in Him, that is in Jesus. To be made complete in Jesus, who is the head of all principality and power. See, Jesus wants us to be made complete. Jesus wants us to be made whole. He wants us to give complete salvation. You see? And we read in Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. In Colossians 4, 12, Epaphras greets you. He being of you a servant of Christ. Who is Epaphras? A servant of Christ. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers. With prayers is laboring. Why? That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That you may stand complete 
and perfect in the will of God. You see, the Bible desires that we be made complete, be made whole. You see, and that's why the servant of God, Ephesus, has been laboring with prayers. That is what Bible says. And my dear friends, you know the good Samaritan when he saved that wounded man, carried him in a, on his donkey and took him to an king, right? Took him to an innkeeper and to the inn, you see? And said, look after him. He has to be made whole, you see? Look after him. You see, when a person is saved, Jesus takes you, the Savior takes you, to the church. The same person is taken to the church so that the innkeeper over there or the servant of God over there we prayers, he labors in order that you be made whole. He labors, he works with the word of God helping you to be made complete in Jesus. That's very important actually. Thirdly, the voice of Jesus is the voice of a friend. The voice of Jesus is the voice of a friend. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Revelation 3 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and will dine with him and he with me. Some of the old translations, they use the word I come in and sup with him, right? Soup with him. That's the word that is used. Soup means to the Lord is saying that I want to have a spiritual communion with you. You see, a spiritual communion between you and Christ. You see, the Lord is knocking at the door as a friend. You see, the true friend knocks at the door and offers help you see? and fellowship. The true friend offering. Encouragement and help and fellowship. You see, Jesus is knocking at the doors of our hearts day after day, Sunday after Sunday, through the word of God as a friend who offers to come in so that he can come in and dine with you, so that he can come in and spread out a table of fellowship with you. The Lord wants to dine with you. He wants to spread a table of feast, spiritual feast of God's word before you. The fourth thing is the voice of Jesus. He is the voice of a shepherd. You see, the voice of Jesus is the voice of the shepherd. Our shepherd says, follow me. Is the shepherd says to the sheep, follow me. If you follow after the good shepherd, you will not walk in darkness. You see, if you fall off with the good shepherd, you will walk in goodness. You will not walk in darkness. John chapter 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 verse 12. Then Jesus spoke again to them. Saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me. See what he says? He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you follow up with the good shepherd, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. You see? Jesus says, follow me. What does it mean, follow me? You go the same way Jesus went. You see? That is following Jesus. You go the same way as he goes. You cannot go into your own ways, you see. By going into your own ways, you cannot follow Jesus, you see. If you are going to follow Jesus, you have to follow into the ways of Jesus, you see. That is following the way of Jesus. If you follow into his ways, you will have light of life and you will walk, not walk in darkness. And we read in Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. He is saying to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Right. He said, Follow him and you will be made fishers of men. If you follow up a good 
good shepherd. He'll be made fishers of souls, you see. He'll be made fishers of men. And in Luke chapter 14, verse 27. Luke 14, verse 27, Jesus said, Take up your cross and follow me. Again, follow me. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Take up your cross and follow me. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You see? If you follow after the good shepherd, you will become his disciple. You, you have to live a God-centered life. If you follow him, bearing your cross, you will be able to live a God-centered life. That's what we saw last Sunday. Die to you to the importance of self. You see? Put the Lord first in your life. Every moment of every day. You see? Put God first. Make Christ the number one priority in your LSD. You see? What is LSG? Make Jesus the number one priority in your living, serving and giving. You see? Living, serving and giving, you see. Make Christ the number one priority. If you walk like this, you are walking and following the voice of the Good Shepherd. The fifth thing is that the voice of Jesus is the Master's voice. The voice of Jesus is the Master's voice. Luke chapter 19 verse 13. And he called his ten servants. And delivered them ten minas for the ten pounds or ten. And said unto them, Occupy till I come. This is Master's voice. He gave them the ten pounds or ten minas. And he said to them, Occupy till I come. It's the Master's voice. Master gave them spiritual riches, spiritual talents, is his spiritual gifts, and asked them to. Work. You got the work to be done. You see? Occupy. You see, the word occupy is used two times in the Bible. What does it mean actually? The first one is in the Old Testament in Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 9. In Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 9, the Bible says, The ancients of Gebal and the wise men thereof were in thee, thy calcars. What does it mean by thy calcars? Means the repairers of seams. They are the repairers in the sea that keep repairing the seams of that big cloth they use to capture the wind, you see, that drives the ship, you see. And so the ancients of Gabal and the wise men that are in thy calcars. All the ships of the sea with their mariners were in thee to occupy thy merchandise. Thy ships are for war. And thy calcars, means your repairers, are for occupying the merchandise. The merchandise that the Lord has given us. You see, the master called them together. And then he delivered them 10 minas or 10 pounds and said, Occupy Eli, come. And so also, you see, the master's voice is, has given us the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the souls of men. He has given us three things, you see. And he says, Occupy the souls of men, Eli, come. You see, the Master is calling us to occupy the souls of men till He comes, you see, to save the souls of men from passing Him on into hell, you see. And so work for the Lord till He comes. You see, we have to be ready for His coming. But many people take it as if in a passive way that you are waiting for the Lord to come and you will just do not have to do anything, you see. Like waiting and doing nothing, just sleeping, you see. In what you have to be ready, you see. Not that you don't have to do anything, but you have to be ready 
and serving the Lord, serving and sharing the gospel. That is the master's voice actually. The sixth thing is the voice of Jesus, is the teacher's voice. The voice of Jesus is the teacher's voice. If you read in Matthew 11 verse 29, our today's verse, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Take your take my yoke up, yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. You see? If we are to be the followers of Jesus, if we are to be the disciples of Jesus, then we have to follow his example. We have to walk in his ways, you see. If Jesus was meek and humble and lowly, then we also have to be meek, humble and lowly. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And he says, learn what does that mean? You have to become teachable, you see. Only the meek and humble and lowly can become teachable, you see. Otherwise people are not teachable, let me tell you. They cannot be taught, you see. It's very hard to teach someone, you see. Because they do not have that learning hard, you see. They are not teachable. That's why Jesus says, For I am meek and lowly in heart, if we are his followers, if we have to be his disciples, then we have first thing is to be meek, humble and lowly as we follow him. Then he says, learn of me. That is become teachable, you see. You have to become teachable. And then you can take my yoke. You see, in the olden days when they used to use animals for plowing the fields and for driving their chariots and cars, they used to have a yoke placed on the horse or maybe on the bullock, you see, on the bullock. They place the yoke, you see. Now carrying a yoke is not at all easy. Carrying a yoke is not at all easy, you see. When they are training a young horse or a young bullock, you see, he does not like the yoke. He doesn't like the yoke. And that's why they have a saying among themselves. First, you have to break the, quote unquote, you have to break the animal, you see. You have to break that animal, you see. You have to break that bullock. In your training, you have to break him, you see. Otherwise, he doesn't want to carry the yoke. He just wants to live like a vagabond. Yes, he lo loves to be free and do what he wants, you see. If the if that horse or that bullock cannot be broken, he will not carry the yoke, you see. He will not carry the yoke. And if he cannot carry the yoke, what will happen? He will not be a useful animal feed for the master's use. That animal cannot be feed for the master's use, you see. To get the yoke is not easy. People don't like to get the yoke, you see. But to become fit for the master's use, it has to be broken. You see, many, many believers, 16 years I have taught in the Bible colleges, in the Bible seminary, you see. Trained many pastors and missionaries and so many Bible college students. But to my amazement, after they have gone through the training, earned the degrees and all these things, the Lord is not able to use them. Why? Because seminary can impart the knowledge and all these things, but they could not impart the breaking part, you see. They could not impart the breaking part. The man has earned the Bible degree and all that, and has come out with good grades, but the spirit of rebellion is still within, you see. It's not yet broken. And so the master, he cannot carry the yoke of the master. The spirit of rebellion and pride is not broken. And so he's not fit to carry the master's ministry, you see. Not fit to carry the yoke, you see. 
and become a useful vessel in the hands of the Lord. It, this is the sad part, you see. In the potter's hand, the mud has to be broken. You see, when it takes the mud, I have literally seen, they take the lumps of mud and break it like this. They start breaking it, you see. After breaking it, it becomes like a little bit like powder. They again take it and then they start rubbing it like this. You see, to break it even into a smaller and smaller fine clay, you see. And even then still there are rocks in it. Or some hard portions of that mud. So then they take a grinder, you see. They put it all, those hard things in that. They take a big hammer and start hammering it, you see. To break it into small pieces, you see. And then again they take a seed and make it to pass it through that. So then only the fine things come out, you see. Then only that clay becomes so soft so that the potter can give it, give it the shape that he wants it, you see. Quote and quote, it has, the person has to be broken, you see, to be a main useful in the kingdom of God, you see. Otherwise cannot carry the yoke. Now when they carry the yoke, what is that? They put the yoke over two horses or two bullocks or more than that. You are being, you are being teaming up with Jesus. When you carry the yoke of Jesus, you are getting into the teaming or you are getting into the team with Jesus. You see, He is the one who leads. But you are just in His team, you see, carrying that yoke, you see, carrying out the Master's ministry. And so the voice of Jesus is the teacher's voice. Finally, the seventh, the voice of Jesus is the voice of the bridegroom. The voice of Jesus is the voice of bridegroom. John chapter 3 verse 28 to 30. John 3 28 to 30. You yourselves bear witness to me. Then I said, I am not the Christ. These are the words of the John the Baptist in John chapter 3. You yourselves bear witness to me that I say, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him, hearing the bridegroom's voice, you see, hears him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. The voice of Jesus is the voice of the bridegroom, you see. Jesus is the bridegroom. And the bridegroom is coming. For whom? For his bride. Who is the bride? The church. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 27 says that the church is the bride of Christ and for whose cleansing and purification Jesus died and shed his blood on the cross. You see, Jesus is the bridegroom, church is the bride, you see. And my work as a pastor is to prepare the bride. For the bridegroom, the innkeeper's job is to prepare the bride to be made whole for a certain day. You see, the bridegroom is coming. You see, like John the Baptist, he says, he hears the voice of the bridegroom and he rejoices. When I hear the voice of Jesus, when I hear the voice of the bridegroom, I rejoice. Then my joy is fulfilled. John the Baptist says in verse 29 and in verse 30 he says he must increase but I must decrease. The servant of God has to decrease but the bridegroom has to increase. You see, he has to increase. The bridegroom is coming for his bride and we read in Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to 12. 
In Matthew 25, 1 to 12, the kingdom of heaven is like a bridegroom and the ten virgins. The kingdom of God is like a bridegroom and the ten virgins, you see. Five were wise and five were foolish. The wise virgins, they cooperate with the pro preparation process, you see. They cooperate with the preparation process, you see. While the foolish resist the preparation process, they just want to go to sleep. They want to sleep, you see. They do not want to be disturbed. Their comfort zone should not be disturbed, you see. These are the foolish actually. While the five wise virgins, they work hard. When the bridegroom is coming, and what happened? Those who were at the night, in the night the cry went up that the bridegroom has come. And those who were ready went with him. Why now the comfort zone of this five fish virgin where this was disturbed? They rise up from the sleep, you see. And they were unprepared, they were not ready. Their lamps had gone out, you see. In trying to prepare themselves in hurry, you see what happened? The bridegroom left with those who were ready. And Bible says the door was shut. You see? The door was shut. And the bridegroom says, I do not recognize your voice. He just recognizes the voice of the wise virgins who cooperated with the preparation process and prepared themselves for that big day. And we read him that bride, bridegroom is coming to take his bride to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 9. I'm going to read these verses and close. Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 9. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linens, bright and clean, was given her to wear. The linen stands for the righteous acts of saints. The angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he added this, and he added these are the true words of God. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. To the marriage supper of the Lamb. My dear friends, are we ready to go into the marriage supper of the Lamb? See? The time is running out, it is coming. Are we preparing for ourselves for that big day? See? Are we cooperating with the preparation process? You see? Today your innkeeper, your pastor, ministers to you the Lord's table. But are you ready for tomorrow? When the Lord, the bridegroom himself, will spread out the table of his marriage supper of the Lamb before you. Before I close, I want to give you one slogan. Today at the Lord's supper table, but tomorrow I'll be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Today the Lord's supper, but tomorrow at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Will I find you there? Will I be able to find you there? Shall we pray?